In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Rehoboam went to Shechem, where all Israel had gathered to make him king. When Jeroboam son of Nabad heard of this, he returned from Egypt, for he had fled to Egypt to escape from King Solomon. The leaders of Israel summoned him, and Jeroboam and all Israel went to speak with Rehoboam. Your father was a hard master, they said. Lighten the harsh labor demands and heavy taxes that your father imposed on us, then we will be your loyal subjects. Rehoboam replied, Come back in three days for my answer. So the people went away. Then King Rehoboam discussed the matter with the older men who had counseled his father Solomon. What is your advice? he asked. How should I answer these people? The older counselors replied, If you are good to these people and do your best to please them, and give them a favorable answer, they will always be your loyal subjects. But Rehoboam rejected the advice of the older men and instead asked the opinion of the young men who had grown up with him and were now his advisers. What is your advice? he asked them. How should I answer these people who want me to lighten the burdens imposed by my father? The young men replied, This is what you should tell those complainers who want a lighter burden. My little finger is thicker than my father's waist. Yes, my father laid heavy burdens on you, but I am going to make them even heavier. My father beat you with whips, but I will beat you with scorpions. Three days later, Jeroboam and all the people returned to hear Rehoboam's decision, just as the king had ordered. But Rehoboam spoke harshly to them, for he rejected the advice of the older counsellors, and followed the counsel of his younger advisers. He told the people, My father laid heavy burdens on you, but I am going to make them even heavier. My father beat you with whips, but I will beat you with scorpions. So the king paid no attention to the people. This turn of events was the will of God for it fulfilled the Lord's message to Jeroboam son of Nebat, through the prophet Ahijah from Shiloh. When all Israel realized that the king had refused to listen to them, they responded, Down with the dynasty of David! We have no interest in the son of Jesse! Back to your homes, O Israel! Look out for your own house, O David! So all the people of Israel returned home, but Rehoboam continued to rule over the Israelites who lived in the towns of Judah. King Rehoboam sent Adoniram, who was in charge of the labor force, to restore order, but the people of Israel stoned him to death. When this news reached King Rehoboam, he quickly jumped into his chariot and fled to Jerusalem, and to this day the northern tribes of Israel have refused to be ruled by a descendant of David. When Rehoboam arrived at Jerusalem, he mobilized the men of Judah and Benjamin, 180,000 select troops, to fight against Israel and to restore the kingdom to himself. But the Lord said to Shemaiah the man of God, Say to Rehoboam, son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all the Israelites in Judah and Benjamin, This is what the Lord says, Do not fight against your relatives. Go back home, for what has happened is my doing. So they obeyed the message of the Lord and did not fight against Jeroboam. Rehoboam remained in Jerusalem and fortified various towns for the defense of Judah. He built up Bethlehem, Etam, Tikoa, Bethzur, Soko, Adulam, Gath, Maresha, Ziph, Adoraim, Lachish, Azekah, Zorah, Aijalon, and Hebron. These became the fortified towns of Judah and Benjamin. Rehoboam strengthened their defenses and stationed commanders in them, and he stored supplies of food olive oil, and wine. He also put shields and spears in these towns as a further safety measure, so only Judah and Benjamin remained under his control. But all the priests and Levites living among the northern tribes of Israel sided with Rehoboam. The Levites even abandoned their pasture lands and property, and moved to Judah and Jerusalem, because Jeroboam and his sons would not allow them to serve the Lord as priests. Jeroboam appointed his own priests to serve at the pagan shrines where they worshipped the goat and calf idols he had made. From all the tribes of Israel, those who sincerely wanted to worship the Lord, the God of Israel, followed the Levites to Jerusalem, 
where they could offer sacrifices to the Lord, the God of their ancestors. This strengthened the kingdom of Judah, and for three years they supported Rehoboam, son of Solomon, for during those years they faithfully followed in the footsteps of David and Solomon. Rehoboam married his cousin Mahalath, the daughter of David's son Jeremoth and of Abihail, the daughter of Eliab, son of Jesse. Mahalath had three sons, Jeush, Shemariah, and Zaam. Later Rehoboam married another cousin, Makah, the daughter of Absalom. Makah gave birth to Abijah, Atai, Ziza, and Shelomith. Rehoboam loved Makah more than any of his other wives and concubines. In all he had eighteen wives and sixty concubines, and they gave birth to twenty-eight sons and sixty daughters. Rehoboam appointed Makah's son Abijah as leader among the princes, making it clear that he would be the next king. Rehoboam also wisely gave responsibilities to his other sons, and stationed some of them in the fortified towns throughout the land of Judah and Benjamin. He provided them with generous provisions, and he found many wives for them. But when Rehoboam was firmly established and strong, he abandoned the law of the Lord, and all Israel followed him in this sin. Because they were unfaithful to the Lord, King Shishak of Egypt came up and attacked Jerusalem in the fifth year of King Rehoboam's reign. He came with twelve hundred chariots, sixty thousand horses, and a countless army of foot soldiers, including Libyans, Sukites, and Ethiopians. Shishak conquered Judah's fortified towns, and then advanced to attack Jerusalem. The prophet Shemaiah then met with Rehoboam and Judah's leaders, who had all fled to Jerusalem because of Shishak. Shemaiah told them, This is what the Lord says, You have abandoned me, so I am abandoning you to Shishak. Then the leaders of Israel and the king humbled themselves and said, The Lord is right in doing this to us. When the Lord saw their change of heart, he gave this message to Shemaiah. Since the people have humbled themselves, I will not completely destroy them, and will soon give them some relief. I will not use Shishak to pour out my anger on Jerusalem, but they will become his subjects, so they will know the difference between serving me and serving earthly rulers. So King Shishak of Egypt came up and attacked Jerusalem. He ransacked the treasuries of the Lord's temple and the royal palace. He stole everything, including all the gold shields Solomon had made. King Rehoboam later replaced them with bronze shields as substitutes, and he entrusted them to the care of the commanders of the guard who protected the entrance to the royal palace. Whenever the king went to the temple of the Lord, the guards would also take the shields and then return them to the guard room. Because Rehoboam humbled himself, the Lord's anger was turned away, and he did not destroy him completely. There were still some good things in the land of Judah. King Rehoboam firmly established himself in Jerusalem and continued to rule. He was forty-one years old when he became king, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city the Lord had chosen from among all the tribes of Israel, as the place to honor his name. Rehoboam's mother was Nama, a woman from Ammon, but he was an evil king, for he did not seek the Lord with all his heart. The rest of the events of Rehoboam's reign from beginning to end are recorded in the record of Shemaiah the prophet, and the record of Iddo the seer, which are part of the genealogical record. Rehoboam and Jeroboam were continually at war with each other. When Rehoboam died, he was buried in the city of David. Then his son Abijah became the next king.